Hello, everybody, and welcome to the 20th episode of the Roots of Life podcast. This is an exciting episode. It is the month of April, and this is the 20th episode, so we feel like it's a bit of a milestone. We are very excited, and because of that reason, we are going to talk a little bit more about marijuana, as we have in the past as well, but we figured today is our opportunity to uh, bring a little light to 420, as it is April, and it is the 20th episode. So thank you for listening. If you want to find any more of our work, you can go check out rootsoflifepodcast.com. You can also find us at patreon.com slash rootsoflife. If you would like to donate a couple dollars, you get a couple little incentives like bonus episodes and other little treats. Uh, Yeah, so thanks for listening. Stay tuned and enjoy the show. Hey, welcome to... Episode 20 of the Roots of Life podcast, everyone. My name is Taylor. I am one half of the hosts on the Roots of Life podcast, joined today by the man himself, James Fitzgerald. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the 20th episode. It is April. It is the 20th episode. It is the April 20th episode. Although this will be coming out before April 20th, we figured why not do it a little early Get it on the 20th episode. So, Jimmy. Yes. What does that mean exactly? Because maybe somebody doesn't know. What April 20th is? Yeah. Ah, yes. Well, there's a few things that April 20th is. It is a terrible, horrible person, a terrible, horrible dictator's birthday. And I won't get into that. But it's also a celebratory day because... April 20th is 420, which if you smoke weed, you know that that is basically the day to celebrate marijuana. It's great. Yes, it is. So we're going to talk about it today. A lot of it. All of our experiences, well, maybe not all of our experiences with it, but some of them, different ways you can smoke marijuana, different types of marijuana, just marijuana in general. Now, I feel like I got to say it now and get it out of the way. And I can't speak for for you, Jimmy, but for myself, I am by no means a professional in the marijuana field. <laughs> no, neither am I. I went through my phase of the time where I smoked a lot of weed and I enjoy it, but I definitely don't know as much as some people in terms of uh, cultivating it and, you know, the different uh, aspects of the culture that, because it it seems like it's really grown in the last few years. I mean, it's, it's a huge industry, like billion dollar industry. If you look at uh, Washington and Colorado at this point, and there's a lot to it, like just the amount of different types of things people have for um, smoking or, eating or whatever it is that you're doing with weed it's it's amazing actually like how diverse it is yeah i remember reading that in 2016 colorado had sold one billion in like legal marijuana sales yeah which is crazy and that's all taxable if it's legalized we can use that money for good things like schools and Programs to help people get off hard drugs and things like that. So, Jimmy, when did you start smoking weed? Um, well, you should know that. <laughs> I don't know that. <laughs> Back in high school, I think, probably like grade eight, grade nine. You started smoking weed that early? Yeah, probably. I don't know. It was really? I th- I thought you were like. A bit of a later bloomer. Yeah, but I feel like, uh, I don't actually know like when it was, but it was like probably grade nine. I feel like everybody was the, was was the first time. Yeah, it was the first time. But when did you start smoking it? Oh, like, okay, you know? yeah, like okay, yeah, the first, yeah, the first time I smoked weed was like yeah, probably grade eight or grade nine, and then it was probably um after I turned nineteen, when I was like 
actually started smoking weed, going out and getting my own and not just like every once in a while at a party kind of thing. It was probably 20, 21 when I really started going. So I haven't smoked a lot of weed for a lot of years, but I think I've tried to make up for it or something in those years that I have. You're doing a good job at it. I, I was, yeah. Not right now. I'm, I'm kind of kind of off and on and off with marijuana at the moment. We're having, having a lover's quarrel. See, I love Mary Jane. I have an appreciation yeah. for Mary Jane. I appreciate the things that she does for my friends and family. But I don't have necessarily a great relationship with her right now. Neither do I. I feel I feel like I just haven't put I just haven't nurtured that relationship. It's the relationship that I have with the family member who you haven't reached out to in a long time. And, you know, I know I'm supposed to call, but I just haven't. <laughs> <laughs> and I kind of just keep putting it off. And and so over time, that relationship just, you know, disconnects more and more and more. Yeah. And that's my relationship with Mary Jane at the moment. I miss her and I, and I should call her, but I, I just have no interest in it at the moment. Well, yeah, sometimes you just need some time. Yeah, that's where that's kind of where mine's going. I'm, I was at this point where I was like, eh, I don't want to smoke weed for a while. So I took a month off. I am on the island again for a week here, so that just it happens. You have to smoke weed when you're on the island, at least once or twice. So it's it's part of our culture. It is. It really is. You you go, you smoke a joint with some friends, and you kind of sit there and talk about whatever's going on, and it just helps like helps everybody get on the same level, the same kind of. It's a very community and socially based practice in a way. Like it's. Do you feel? That it puts everybody kind of on the same wavelength. Yeah, I think so. It gets everybody kind of in the same zone. You're, everybody's calm and just happy to be there instead of, and kind of eases that anxiety that you get a little bit. So you can talk about more stuff. See, I feel that I, I would agree with you, but only in uh, specific settings mm -hmm. that are kind of exclusive to like me and my close friends. Yeah. I wouldn't have that same experience with people that I'm not very close with or people that I'm not already comfortable around. Yeah. And I only would want to put myself in that state of conscience when uh, when I'm with people that I'm comfortable around and that I feel like I can, you know, be cool with going to that place. Yeah. I feel it actually amplifies my, like, amplifies anxiety for me if it's with people that I'm not very comfortable with. I feel I feel more anxious and I'm like ah I, I don't like this I don't want to be here. Yeah, you just don't want to talk as much yeah. and, or I, for me I would always get in my own head I would think about I would analyze what people are saying and yeah. then I would want and then I would want to say something but I would be thinking in my own head is that something is that weird to say? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then I and then I don't say it out of like out of this anxious feeling and this fear that these people that I'm not necessarily close with are going to think I'm weird for saying weird things. I'm not too worried about being weird, but it's always just like, will I sound stupid or like, will that come out right? Or will it? And, and half the time I end up sort of thinking about that kind of stuff. And then I'm like, Oh, I missed the chance to actually like input my thoughts into the conversation. We're on a different topic at this point. I'm like, okay, now I got to figure out what, what to talk about for this topic and then yeah i get confused and don't ever <laughs> talk just end up in my own head for a while yeah so i'm always selective when uh smoking weed and you know where i am and what i'm doing and who i'm with i think is usually a particularly big one actually i found when i came back here because I've, I've been used to just basically smoking weed by myself and then just like sitting there quietly doing an activity or uh, writing, reading, whatever it is, playing video games mostly. Um, so I found when I did come back here and then I was sitting out around a, a fire with some friends, I was just like almost unable to talk because I kind of forgot how to do that when I was stoned. It's, I was just like, oh man, I'm not used to talking in this headspace anymore. So it was a little little strange, but I, I figured it out, got back into it. A question that I wanted to ask you is, what are some particular 
things that you like to do when you're stoned or when you're smoking weed? Like, do you find there's certain benefits or do you find there's certain things that you prefer not to do mm. when you're smoking weed? I know I, I prefer, I find like, uh, whatever activity you're doing when you start to smoke weed, you're kind of getting that mindset and your body's like, okay, this is what we're doing. We'll keep doing this. So I prefer when I'm smoking weed to go out and do something active so that when I'm, when I'm baked, I'm not just sitting there lounging like, oh, I can't get up. I'm too baked. I'd rather be out walking, smoking a joint, like do, going for a hike or, or just going out for a walk or something so that I'm still like energetic and I still feel like I can move. Cause I find, yeah, it, it almost big makes me stuck in whatever activity I'm doing at the time. Um, so what I prefer to do is doing physical activities. Like when I slack line, sometimes it's great to just smoke a doobie while you slack line. It's fun. We were a uh, friend and I were kind of practicing our slack lining skills, doing different stuff one day. And we were just, we would be slack lining, smoking a joint and then passing it to the friend who's on the ground, trying to like still stay stable while you're passing joints. Ah, challenging, challenging it, yeah. yourself mentally, I yeah. think, is mentally and physically one. all at the same time. But yeah, and I like to have those uh, those moments where you are with friends and you can have a discourse and talk about just like whatever comes to your head. Because I find you're you're almost able to more freely associate things when you're high. It just helps a bit. Uh, again, though, depending on the friend group. Can you give me an example? Actually, I can give you an example. So I was hanging out with a good friend yesterday and um, we were playing. He actually, he sent me a text. He's like, hey, do you want to come play Lego? And I was like, uh, Lego? Seriously? I was like, but yes, actually, I would love to play Lego. So I <laughs> went over to his house <laughs> and we started playing Lego for a while. And I was sitting there and I was like building this structure. We were building like a castle. And then I started building some like spaceship thing. But I was like trying to like make things look a certain way. And then. What, then we're, he's like, "You want to go out and smoke some weed?" I was like, "Yeah, let's do that." Came back in and I was like, "Man, the world is at my fingertips." And I just started like, I built this crazy ship, and then I built like a Trojan horse kind of thing to break into his castle. And it was just, yeah. like, I was just having a lot of fun with just building cool stuff, and I just I found it was more fun, and I could I had more creativity in the time uh, when I was baked. Because earlier I was kind of like fussy about like, oh, this this doesn't look right, this doesn't look as cool." But then it was just like, whatever, let's put things on here and see what happens. Like, make it what it is. That was my free association. It was less less of the, like, let's build something that looks structurally sound and proper and the way it should be to I got this cool spaceship that does cool stuff. <laughs> it, bro- it broke down the walls and yeah. then it kind of just, like, opened you up to, like, just being creative that's i think something that a lot of people say right is yeah. that uh s- smoking weed definitely increases your creativity and some people would argue that there's um the stereotype you know of the the lazy stoner and that it would uh prohibit your productivity yeah I mean, that's, again, that's when it comes down to, like, the activity for me. What Like, if I'm doing something active or something creative at the time, then my productivity continues to stay high. And sometimes it's even better. But if I'm doing something just, like, sitting down, sitting on a couch, or just, like, just being stationary, basically, then I, I don't end up getting that productivity creativity boost i end up kind of getting lethargic and tired and that's why you continue you continue to do that yeah same I, thing exactly that i you continue were to do that laying being lazy thing so i always i've found that there's times in my life where like if i'm exercising regularly and i'm smoking weed then smoking weed is a lot funner and i don't know exactly what the reason is like if it's just because i have more energy because of my frequent exercising but yeah. Those have been some of the best times. I mean, I th- or the best time to smoke weed, like when you're on a beach in the summer. <laughs> like, oh my god. Yeah, beach anytime with weed is great. Yeah, Nanaimo <laughs> River. Yeah. Oh man, I oh I love Nanaimo River. I was just thinking like Tofino Beach too, like just Long Beach, just hanging out. 
So good. Grab a skimboard and just yeah. go trucking along the beach. Yeah. So this is something. This, I think, comes straight from the creativity of stoners who are advocates of cannabis culture. And it amazes me because it seems, to me at least, in the past, I would say, five or six years, the, you know, with the legalization in a couple of the states and, uh, you know, the progressive movement that we are making here to legalize medicinal marijuana as well, uh, it seems that people are always finding new ways to smoke weed. Yeah. Like, it just seems like it's blown up in the last few years. Yeah. Where it wasn't so in, say, our high school years. No, I I, I mean, I've, I think stoners have always been really creative people making, like, apple pipes or things of, uh, like, basically MacGyvering things into something they can smoke out of. No, but I'm talking but more. But like now, it's crazy. Engineering, skills. yeah, they have like engineering stuff. They have they have weed Olympics. Like, see how much you can smoke in a certain amount of time. Like these crazy things, the craziest joints that people can. Roll. Yeah. Oh my god, people have been getting really creative. I've seen a few on like Instagram and stuff where it's like this beautiful like art piece and it's just a joint, and they've put like all these different kinds of like oils and like whatever in it, and then they've got like oil like spiraled around the joint and it looks so cool but i'm like i wouldn't even want to smoke that it's just yeah. like whatever it's just pretty have you ever watched on youtube uh two chains is two chains is show no he, he has a show it's called i think it's called the most expensivest shit the most expensivest shit <laughs> yeah and the show is literally episode to episode is all different and it's he goes around and in one episode he goes meets with breeders and they're like the most expensive dogs in the world wow and the one episode is where he goes and smokes out of the most expensive bong in the world oh my god yeah and so there's all these different episodes i've i i I only watched it once. Like I spent, I was at work, I think, and I spent a couple hours literally just watching <laughs> Two Chains's most expensive shit on YouTube. I think that's a Taylorism, expensivest. No, that's the name oh, of the that's show. The name of the show. Okay. I'm, yeah. I thought it was just the most expensive, and you're adding the ist on the end there. No, I'm pretty sure that's what they called the show. Oh, that's. Sweet. I could. Okay. Be, it might be. It might be the most expensive shit, but I'm pretty sure like that's They've what added, they called yeah, the show. Yeah, that would make sense. They That'd added be it for the show because yeah. it's two chains and it's like urban and yeah. it's slang and you know. Yeah, that so. makes sense. I like it. Yeah. So I have a question for you. I don't know if you have an answer. But when did dabs happen? Oh man, when did that become a thing? Oh, a few. Well, I mean, a few years ago, people were doing like, you'd watch those YouTube videos of people doing like crazy dabs, and then they just like black out. And well, see, I had never heard of a dab up until maybe three or four years ago. Yeah, I think that's kind of when they came into like focus, and then they kind of they're now they're huge. Like that's what like all these people do. I. Yeah, I've done one once and I did dabs. not like it. it I've like, never done it. Like it seems extreme to me. It kind of is. Like it was they didn't do like a big one for me, but then like you know when you most of the time when you smoke weed, you kind of like hold it in. And when I was doing that, I did a dab and they were like and I went to hold it in, they're like do not hold it in, like let it out. And I was like, "What? Why?" So obviously I did. And then I was like, oh, you guys are just, like, being weird. I'm fine. Like, probably, like, 10 minutes I was just talking, being, like, being normal. And then all of a sudden I literally started to melt into the couch. Or like, <laughs> I was just, like, I was just sinking. And I was like, I need to go home. So I just called a cab, got I got out of there, went home right away. I was like, I cannot stay here. <laughs> were, you, were you able to pay the taxi driver? Oh, yeah, no, I was totally fine, like, getting home. It was just like I know I knew I was gonna be like melted by the time I got home, <laughs> just like a pile of goo, not able to do anything. So, was this in Nanaimo? Yes, yes, it was. So you went home to your parents. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. We actually, uh, I was, I was talking to them about what this podcast was gonna be about yesterday, 
I had had the computer at the table there writing up the uh, the template for it. And then, so we got on the topic of like talking about hot knifing. So my dad was like, do your parents know what that is. Yeah, they do. They've apparently they've That's done amazing. it. So wow. Yeah. Your parents are gangster. My dad was like, yeah, the first time I ever heard about like what hash was and like what hot knifing was, he's like, I was in Saskatchewan, like walked into this party and he's like, oh man, there's a lot of smokers here. Cause the room was filled with smoke. And then a buddy's like, no, go to the, go look in the kitchen. And like, he walked in and around like the burners was like a bunch of butter knives just stuck in. Um, for those of you who don't know how to hot knife, you stick a butter knife into those coil burners so that it heats up. You drop some hash on it, press two butter, two of these hot butter knives together, or if it's hot enough, you can just use one, I guess. And then you kind of just uh, breathe in the smoke from that and it gets you really high. So... He told me there was like one of, one of the many ways to of smoke weed. Yeah, hot knifing is one of them. Dabs another. Dabs are crazy. I can't can't get over it. See, man, like I, you know, I went through the phase of uh, being in high school where, you know, it was just such a common thing for us to take bong hits and mm-hmm. smoke out of pipes all the time and, uh, you know, roll joints. I never was one to smoke a ton of blunts no i've never really done those it was once in a while shout out to marty chandler mm-hmm. always rolling super blunts as we called them <laughs> love it yeah well it's safe to say we got we got died a couple times don't get died don't get died yeah you don't want to get died no but o- always do fun things always do fun things yeah yeah. Yeah. I mean, through the years, I've tried all the different kinds of ways to smoke weed. I know, like, the apple pipe was one of my favorites. I, I'd just, like, be at home, make an apple pipe, and then just chuck it down the alley. I'd be like, cool, evidence gone. <laughs> yeah. I know some people used to do the can, like, for a pipe. Yeah. Which, now looking back, that's probably was not very healthy. Not at like, all. smoking through, like, a tin aluminum. Can. Uh, yeah, aluminum tin. can. Aluminum can, yeah. yeah. But you know. I know people that had like you know those like honey bear, um, like th- like honey dispenser things you can get. They're like a little yeah. bear full of honey. I know people that made those into like bongs. Oh, crazy! Yeah, they're pretty cool. But yeah, with a gravity bong with like a couple different two liter bottles. That we had done that before. You used the bottom part yeah. was uh, we used like a coffee can. Oh, okay. And then the, for the top, we used, like, you cut a two liter in half. Yeah. See, I've never actually done do one. I've never oh. done that. But I've. I think I only ever had done it, like, the one day. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was one night. It was crazy. I was with a bunch of crazy ass people and <laughs> made bad decisions. <laughs> <laughs> that happens in your youth. We've done it. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah. The other one, though, edibles. Those things are crazy. I've had bad experiences. Yeah. I know uh, Joe Rogan does a bit where he talks about how, like, a gummy bear shouldn't be able to steal your soul. <laughs> I've <laughs> seen that one. It's in his newest, uh, his his newest, newest special. stand-up. His special. It's so funny. If you haven't seen it, you yeah. got to watch it. It'll totally, like, it totally explains edibles to the extent they are at this point. <laughs> yeah. I think... I think I told you about when I watched that. Yeah, you, you sent it to me, and then I watched it that same day. Right. I think I Snapchatted that part. Yeah. You ever try to do that Snapchat part of a movie or something, and then you miss a part, so you have to rewind the movie? Yeah. And then you have to try and Snapchat it again and get the timing right? Yeah, because it, like, it always starts after you press it and ends before you let go. Yeah, so you have to start pressing the record button on your phone, you know, a couple seconds early and sometimes you're trying to get the full 10 seconds so you have to like time it perfectly yeah so you're fighting between your phone and the film that you're streaming or watching just to get it all there yeah that's that's a funny one though it's good yeah it explains that yeah. so perfectly i've seen him and joey diaz talk about edibles before as they usually end up talking about weed. they usually do yeah. and yeah, and Joey Diaz just saying how how many edibles he'll consume. <laughs> and, I mean, he's a, and how he's a just, big guy. 
dude it just doesn't even like fuck with him but everybody else is like on their ass yeah so it's pretty funny yeah i've been uh i've had a few edibles here and there i'm not the biggest fan of them they're they're always they're always like different for me sometimes i'll have a really good time sometimes they won't do anything sometimes i'll be high for three days straight yeah i I can't i can't do life like this i can't yeah so edibles i forget what the percentage i think there's something like 20 percent more psychoactive than marijuana yeah i think so there's just the way it breaks down in your yeah it metabolizes in your uh through your digestive tract as opposed to uh the thc getting into your blood through your lungs i forget what the actual percentage is but it's quite a bit higher you know, so if you are consuming edibles, you're probably on a whole other level. I did have an experience one time where I took a bite of an edible and then I forgot I had taken a bite of it. Like I only took one bite and I forgot I had taken it. And then I, I had to work a night shift that evening at 8 p.m. And this was probably about 12 p.m. So there was a solid eight hours And I had a crazy night, just to say the least, at work. I ended up, it was one of those, like, 24-hour experiences that I was quite overwhelmed with and didn't know how I was dealing with it. (laughs) So I just looked up the, uh, what it breaks down to when you eat it. Um, I can't see, I can't see a percentage here, but when you smoke, uh, weed, it's Delta 9 tetrahydrocannabinol, which is... Um, the regular THC, but when you eat it, it's converted to the more psychoactive 11 hydroxy THC by the liver. So, it, it's a it's a different compound that makes you basically higher, just the way that it's broken down by your liver. Right, and I'm pretty yeah, I'm. It's supposed to be more psychoactive. Yeah, it, yeah, it is. Which but... just basically means it gets you higher. Yeah, <laughs> just messes with you a little more. Totally. Yeah, I think I might I might have mentioned my edible story in a previous podcast. But I don't know. I'll do it again. Um I had been given some edibles, about a 3 the size of a square Ziploc container. And I ate one and I was sitting here playing video games, actually in this exact room. But <laughs> sitting there playing video games for a while. About half an hour later, I was like, man, I'm hungry. I was like, oh, I got a cookie right here. So I ate another one. And they were they were big, and they they tasted more like weed than cookie. So I ate the, the second one, and then like half an hour later, I was like, man, I'm getting really high. And then I was like, I'm also really hungry. So I ate the third one. <laughs> <laughs> the next... The next morning, I woke up and I was like, I'm broken. I cannot I'm function. <laughs> I walked straight out. I was like, so the parents was like, I'm really broken. I need you to drive me to work. I remember this, actually. <laughs> I remember you having to work at the keg yeah. and you being like, I can't work. And you had to get your parents to drive you. Yeah. It was <laughs> and like, you live. It was like a story. <laughs> like any new people that came to that keg for like a year and a half knew who I was because of that story. They're, I'd be like, hi, I'm Jimmy. They're like, I know who you are. And I'm like, what? They're like, I heard the story. I'm like, oh, okay. but yeah it was it was bad um i had gotten my wisdom teeth taken out like a a week before not even a week before that was why my friend had given me those and um so when i went to work they were like oh man he's messed up on his pain meds and i was and then they just they were like okay you you can go home and i was like okay got my parents to come get me again (laughs) And then, like, th- we talked about it later, um, and they were like, so, you were on this? And I was like, yeah, I didn't mean to be. It was, like, the day before when I had them. And then, like, yeah. But but that night, I felt like I was time traveling. I'd, I'd called a <laughs> oh friend to come and bring me McDonald's because, like, I can't deal with life. I can't move. I can't go anywhere. Like, I need you to just save me. I'm really hungry. <laughs> but, yeah, it was brutal. It was, like, I think 
three days later or two days later when it was when I was finally like kind of back to normal. Lindsay and Diane were probably laughing at you. Oh yeah. First thing my dad was like, Who gave it to you though? I was like, that doesn't matter. What matters is <laughs> I need to get to work. <laughs> <laughs> who gave you drugs yeah exactly <laughs> and the worst part was like there was nobody else to bartend really because everyone was at, like at a festival so i was like the only bartender. it was bad but it was funny that's great yeah it was a great time on that note i think we're gonna go for our first break of the episode all right and we are going to come back and we're going to talk some more for all you lovely listeners out there. See you soon. So, see you soon. And we're back. And it's that special time of day where I get to ask Jimmy one special question. What's your question? Jimmy, I want to know what tickles your fancy. Ooh. What tickles your fancy? um this week my fancy my tickled fancy my fancy tickle whichever way you want to put it i think the first (laughs) one makes more sense (laughs) well i almost messed it up so um is these nice soft warm gooey delicious things just warm this sounds really sexual (laughs) warm cookies fresh from the oven just the best makes the house smell good makes the tummy feel good unless you eat too many but if you don't then it's great and you have this amazing delicious food of the gods in your stomach so good i don't think i've ever had a time in my life where cookies have felt good in my stomach. They always, they always feel good in your mouth, I guess. It's that in mouth your mouth. Feel. And there's a it, it's that mouth yeah. pleasure. It's, you know, pleasure yeah. monkey. All about that mouth feel. That pleasure, man. Mm. Yeah. That's true. My, yeah. M- cookies are always are. good before. Later on you always never feel oh, good after. I had too many cookies. It's not good. I think I had one time where one of my friends, she made me cookies and literally like probably the healthy healthiest cookies i've ever eaten mm-hmm. in my life where i i don't even remember what it had in it but it was down to the point of i they were I, i'm pretty sure they were mm-hmm. vegan there was just coconut and almonds and things that i don't even know but yeah it was the healthiest cookie ever and i think i had two of them they were they were protein type nice. cookies they were, del- they were I like, delicious uh... They really were free banana oatmeal chocolate chip cookies. Now, do you like them because they're gluten free or do they just happen to be they just happen to be gluten free? But I that's that's the reason I like I tried them. So if I if I took a syringe and put gluten inside, I still like it. They taste good. Would would you still enjoy it? I mean, unless the gluten tastes tastes bad, whatever. Does gluten taste bad? No, gluten tastes amazing. Why do you think everybody eats bread and stuff? Gluten is the best. I I fucking love gluten. Extra gluten, please. (laughs) (laughs) Do you guys have veggie burgers? Yeah. Can you put some bacon on it for me? (laughs) Extra greasy, please. Just cook it in bacon fat. (laughs) All right, Taylor. I have a question for you. What tickles your fancy? Well... The most tickled fancy that I ever get <laughs> is when I get to travel over the ocean for hours and hours, and then I get to drive for minutes and minutes, <laughs> to, to, for minutes and minutes, and I get to go home, and I get to indulge in days worth of my mother's fantastic cooking. That's amazing. So, mother's cooking that's probably one of my favorite it's, reasons to come home it is it, it's so great i don't have to worry about it my mom is more than happy to just take care of me for multiple yeah. days at a time it's so nice <laughs> you know she, she's lucky to see me maybe two times a year so when she does she's very happy i'm yeah. very happy that i get to see her because i always enjoy seeing my mother 
me and her have a great relationship, but it just doesn't happen all that often because obviously I'm a busy man. She's a busy woman. She's got a family to take care of. I got myself to take care of. I can hardly take care of myself. That's because we're still children. <laughs> yeah, I'm like a big man baby. Yeah, actually, one of the youth I work with, he always calls me the man child. Oh, I totally yeah. see that. I'm like, I'm like, thanks, yeah. man. <laughs> Makes me feel good. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate He, he you. alternates between calling me an old man and the man child. So I'm like, I don't know where I fit in here, but all right. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I would not survive without the girlfriend. I could see that. I I'm I think I'm in the same yeah. boat. I I probably wouldn't be able to survive without my girlfriend. <laughs> no. No. I told her w- this was last week sometime. I told her how much I wanted just like saltine crackers yeah. so that I could dip them in peanut butter. And because that was all I had for food. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I, I had peanut butter, and so I wanted to get crackers. Yeah. So I was thinking about walking to the store, and then I didn't. I just starved myself That's instead. That's not a good idea. Thinking I'll, get, thinking I'll get food the following day. And then when she came over, she bought me crackers. What a nice lady. Yeah, she's fantastic. <laughs> That's the girlfriend. Killing it. Topic two on episode 20 of the Roots of Life podcast. If you are just joining us on this episode, you can go to rootsoflifepodcast.com and find all the previous episodes. You can also find them on YouTube, SoundCloud, and any other podcast services around the globe. But if you have been with us, then stay with us. Continue to listen as we continue on to topic two to talk about spring. Uh, Because it's coming up to spring. It's that time of year. We get spring hard where we live. Yeah. Spring comes hard. It comes on hard and fast. It's like, it's spring now. It's here. Yeah. And it's, to me, it feels like one of the longest seasons. I think so. Yeah. It's like that more moderate season. We get that, the spring rain for a long time. Yeah. And I guess, I think even fall, like, fall if, for, if, for us too is like a long It feels season. similar to spring. Yeah. It's, it, it starts to go from the warmer rain to the colder rain obviously because we're yeah like creeping away from summer and getting into winter but it just it rains a lot and it's cloudy and like muggy and very you know there's lots of moisture in the air so we're getting into that time of year it is we're getting away from the winter months now and we're creeping up into summer it was really nice yesterday i don't know what it was like in Nanaimo, but we had it was almost, it must have been 18 degrees, maybe 20 degrees Celsius. I don't know how that converts into Fahrenheit. But, yeah, it was really nice. And now today it's just gloomy and rainy. And this is kind of the back and forth uh, game that we play with the weather until we hit July, usually, where it's the summer comes in full effect and it's 25 plus every day, which I cannot wait. <laughs> I love it when it gets that. I think in Fahrenheit, about like 20 is probably around like 71. So 18 is probably like 67, 68. See, I, I don't, I have no idea. I just know that like 21 degrees, which is about room temperature, is about like 72 or 71 or somewhere around there. Right. See, but how does that convert? Because it's not even like th- it, it's not a three to one ratio. No, it's not. Because it's like it's this. Oh man, the conversion for it's actually super hard. I, it's weird I because I learned I'm how sure. to do the math, but I had I struggled so hard with that formula. I was like, I can't do that. Yeah, the formula isn't straightforward. No, it's, it's not weird. as it's not as simple as you know two to one or three to one or yeah you know there's yeah there's a certain Cause like 104 is 40 degrees where like 72 is like 20 degrees yeah which makes so no sense yeah i mean not to me anyways i'm no, no mathematician though by any means no i'm i'm not amazing at math i i, I had trouble with that one yeah so spring is here and mm. it's that like I want to talk about spring cleaning because I think that is something that's important. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, everybody kind of does it in a different way. Maybe some people don't really do it at all, but I think it's important because it's, you know, it's that time now where it's been a few months since the new year 
And maybe some people have fallen off of their New Year resolutions, which, you know, can be depressing or drags people down a little bit. And now it's a good opportunity to clean out the closet and get ready for the excited summer months. Because we all know that, you know, whether or not you like the snow and you like the winter months, you know, or... But it's all known that the summer comes and we all get endorphins and, you know, we get those dopamine hits from the vitamin D because lack of vitamin D can is, you know, can cause depression. And so it's like the time to prep for the summer, I feel. Yeah, I think that's what most people do. They try and get that summer bod back. Yeah, everybody That's talks the about the summer body, you know, getting yeah. it ready. You got a couple months now before it's beach season, right? Get that beach bod. Killing it. <laughs> Gains. Uh, hashtag swole. I, yeah. Wow. <laughs> Sorry, I just I couldn't stop there. I had to keep going. Um, yeah, I actually really like the uh, the idea of spring cleaning. I like to try and get rid of excess stuff. Um, to this week, I've been working here at, at my parents' house. We tore down the back deck and we're doing about 25 years worth of spring cleaning. In, um, in one week. <laughs> in one week, yeah. The, the basement we have is, we're digging it out so that it's a bit um, higher so that we're not hunched over when we go down there. Cause we're all, we're pretty tall people around, around the six foot height. Um, And the basement's around the five foot height. So digging that out, it's an unfinished basement, but it's full of like 25 years worth of stuff. So we're slowly pulling it all out. But you're getting that deck ready so that it can be used to enjoy in the summer. Exactly. New starts, fresh starts. Fresh start, new balcony. That's exciting. So are you doing any type of cleaning out jim your spring cleaning with you making your move coming up are you like kind of trying to minimize stuff or anything or are you thinking about getting rid of anything particular for when you do make the move back to the island um i found out the day before i came to the island so i have not done any of that yet I haven't even like cleaned the house since I found out. Is that something that's going to go through your head though when you're kind of oh, packing everything? Are definitely. you you going to start kind of uh just thinking about what you, do you really need? Is there things like are you concerned with about how much you're taking back? Um I'm not not really. I mean, we don't we don't have a lot of stuff that's like excess. The like really the the messiest part of our house is when we we have we have a second couch which I I want to get rid of, so that's that's one thing we're definitely gonna get rid of it. Um, but that's always covered in like clothes and stuff. It's the laundry couch, so that needs to go. So that's no longer a an issue. But beyond that, we don't really have a lot of stuff. We kind of just have like the basic necessities, like a couch, a TV stand, a table, like normal stuff you'd have in a house. So there isn't, we haven't gotten to the point where we've collected too many things at this point. Right. Are you going to be renting a U-Haul for the move? I think so. I'm not sure. uh, I think you can get one that you can like attach your car to, I think. Oh, like a trailer? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you can do that. Because we have to get the both cars back as well at some some point. But what does, what does Ashley drive? She drives a Ford Escape. Oh, okay. So she can pull it. I mean, you wouldn't want to pull one of those in your car, I don't think, right? No, yeah, no, I wouldn't be, be able pretty to pull hard escape the in my car. Yeah, but yeah, her car, she could, she could probably pull my car, no problem. Yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. Cool. Well, that's one thing, you know, is yeah, you just want to try and prepare for those summer months because yeah, it's a time, it's a new season, and there's things that are growing outside, you know, like with the rain giving life to the environment and all the green grass and everything. And there's things that are blooming and it's our time to bloom as well. Spring is actually my favorite season for that reason. 
I really love flowers. Um, one of my favorite things to do is go out and take pictures of flowers, different macro shots, different cool landscape photos with flowers. If you look at the Instagram, sometimes I post my own stuff. Sometimes I find things online where there's just fields of flowers, cool different flowers here and there. That's the reason why spring's my favorite. It's new beginnings, new growth, change, all that metaphorical stuff in one. But it's also the prettiest season, in my opinion. Just everything's bright and growing and new. You can find James on Instagram at Coach James Fitz. Yeah. I have a lot of flowers on there if you like flowers. Yeah, totally. I love those flowers. They're beautiful flowers. Thanks, man. Yeah. You know what my favorite part about the transition from winter to spring is? Yeah, like as, you know, the transition that we're into now. What's the, what's your favorite part? The best part about it is that the days get longer. Oh man. Which I love means that. I can naturally stay up later without, you know, f- I-, I can eat later and still be in sync with, you know, my circadian clock and just mm-hmm. I-, I don't have to feel guilty about eating <laughs> later. <laughs> so <laughs> I-, I naturally get to eat more and I feel I, I have more energy. Because yeah, you're not stuck in this, like, I have four hours to eat because the sun's going to go down. Yeah, the sun's going to go down at four o'clock in the afternoon, and all of a sudden yeah. I'm hungry because it's four and I can't eat. And I'm like, no, nah, like, that sucks. Yeah, that's brutal. Sun's up till 9.30. <laughs> I get to eat all day. <laughs> I always find in the summer I don't, I don't feel like I need to eat as much because I'm getting more energy from being out and doing things and just the sunshine. Uh so I don't I find I don't eat as much in the summer as I do in the winter months where you're kind of cold, you're in, inside all the time, kind of bored, so you eat more anyways. Yeah, but, I think yeah. it's uh I read a quote, one of my favorite quotes or a quote anyways is I forget I I, I saw it at the yoga studio one time and it was basically just about how bears hibernate in the winter. And naturally, humans want to do the same, but yeah. but we're not meant to. Huh. So you know, as the winter comes in and it gets dark at it gets darker earlier, you naturally want to like you yeah like you spend more time inside. You're kind of quote unquote sleep lazier. Yeah. You sleep more, right? But we're not meant to do that. You know, we don't have to sleep for months at a time and hibernate like certain animals. Yeah, that makes sense. And so you have to kind of fight that and you have to be conscious of it. Yeah, that's always that's always a problem for me, especially because I don't I'm not always working like 4 days a week, 5 days a week, whatever. I have shift work, so there's some weeks where I don't work, other weeks where I work like 100 hours. Um so I find in the winter, especially in that situation, I sleep a lot. Yeah, like way more than I should. Then I just I- don't feel good. No, it, like, totally runs you down. Yeah. Too much sleep is bad. Everything in moderation. I never thought I would ever say too much sleep is bad, but it's so true. Yeah, I know. As as a teenager, like, I was like, oh, man, sleep is amazing. I will never get enough sleep. But now I'm like, man, sometimes sleeping is not good for you. No. <laughs> You yeah. ever have those 12 hour sleeps and and then you wake up and your back hurts because you've basically just yeah. been laying on it for too long? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I've also had like just days where you like sleep for four hours and you're like ready awake, you're wild, good to go for like a couple days even. Yeah. So it's, it's, it depends like just where you're at in. Everybody has those weird like fluctuations where some days you'll need those like 10 to 8. Eight to ten hours, maybe more, um, or even just like four hours. So, yeah. I can never survive off four hours of sleep. I hate. I, can't, I couldn't. I, can't I couldn't that. consistently survive off four hours of sleep. Yeah, even but, for me, it's hard to do just for a day. Like I end up feeling pretty crummy throughout the whole process of that day. I, I've made it. I've been getting a lot better at making sure I'm getting adequate amounts of sleep. You know, usually seven hours a night 
is yeah. what I aim for. I've kind of set that as my new standard. You know, it used to be six, but I realized yeah. that wasn't enough. That's, I read, yeah, that's what I was doing too, and I've I've gone to seven as well. I I read somewhere as well that they had done studies, you know, and uh, it was seven hours is what they came to the conclusion as. And yeah. I've also recognized from like I'm sure it's different from person to person. It varies a little bit. But for myself, I also did recognize that seven hours is my minimum to uh, just to feel decent to get through the day without feeling like I'm, you know, super worn out. Six hours, I'm pretty unmotivated to do anything. Yeah. I mean, for um, I think it's like six, seven and a half hours is like a five cycles through your sleep cycle or four one of the two but that's basically like the optimal so seven and a half is around where like people try should try and get for get to Mm. that's why everybody has always said like eight hours because they've just rounded up so eight hours is what you need but it's, it's technically like seven and a half is where you should be right I've got this app on my phone, and I honestly don't know how accurate it is, but what it does is you basically leave it on while you sleep, and it uses the microphone, I think, to like monitor your breathing. And so if I tell it that I need to like wake up for 8 a.m., then it will set a timer between... 7 30 and 8 a.m or yeah. you know 7 30 and 8 30 and it'll the alarm goes off at the time that the app is thinks that my sleep cycle is at the optimal point for me to wake up by monitoring my like breathing and whatever yeah i have the same thing um and i've, I've used it for a couple of years actually uh on and off but it used to be that this this app that I have it only would do it if the phone was on your bed or I have a I have an, a watch that connected to my phone as well. Um, so if I had that and it, it was based on movement alone, but now it has this like they call it sonar, but it uses the microphone and I think it does make some like clicks and beeps sometimes just to I don't I don't know how it works, but mm. yeah, it checks to see if once you're in REM sleep is when it tries to wake you up. When you're at the highest point in your sleep schedule, closest to being awake. Mm -hmm. Cool. On that note, we're going to go for our second break, and then we're going to come back for our last topic of the day. Okay. Bye. Awesome. Life is paradox. Life is mystery. Don't cling to logic. Love. And we are back for our final topic of the day. A new topic that we are calling Ako Taco. <laughs> I, I didn't now, even think about how that was gonna sound, and it's amazing. I know I didn't. I didn't know how it was gonna sound either until I just said it. Ako Taco. Ako Taco. Yes, ese. Um, so Ako Taco is abbreviation is it abbreviated for awkward talk yeah which i guess talk isn't abbreviated it's actually longer it's longer yeah yeah but the idea of ako taco is it's we're gonna talk about the conversations that are awkward to have yeah so the idea awkward yeah they're the they're the conversations that you you know you have to have that you don't want to have because you're kind of processing it in your head. You're like, you know, no possible way is this going to turn out well. Yeah. You know, you're probably going to hurt someone's feelings or you're going to feel awkward. And so out of that became Ako Taco. <laughs> Thanks to Wonder Boy for sending it in. Killing it. Ako Taco. So the idea for this week's taco taco is the conversation of telling someone they need to shower slash that they smell of body odor 
Smell like vinegar and nastiness. They probably <laughs> had football practice and then didn't shower. For a couple days. You know, bro? Like, they were totally <laughs> in the gym and didn't take care of themselves hygienically Getting after swole. the fact. Hashtag gains. There you go. Jimmy, how do you how do you how do you have that conversation? How do you tell somebody they oh, smell? Man. I don't even know. Like, I don't. I know that there's people that are, you're like, man, they need to shower. But I don't know if I've ever actually been like, hey, you need to shower. I don't know if I've ever brought it up to them or just been like, okay, they smell bad. But I mean, I feel like I should because it's like, I think I'd want to know if I smelled bad. Because- I would too. Yeah, I mean, what about what about a significant other? Like, what if oh. you had to tell your girlfriend or a girl had to tell her boyfriend? It seems more likely that a girl would have to tell her boyfriend that he needs to shower. How how would you if somebody if a girl came up to you and said, "My boyfriend smells," how do I tell him, or what should I do about it? What do you, does she try and suggest going for a swim at the local rec center and taking a bar of soap and like no. scrubbing him down in the pool? <laughs> no. Or maybe they go into the family room and she tries I to think, shower with him, just like scrub him down. I think. To be honest, I think it should just be straight up like, "You smell bad. Go shower." <laughs> I, I mean, I mean, it could it could hurt a little bit, but if you like, you could bring it up easier. Like, "Hey, were you at the gym today?" Talk about it a bit, but like, "Hey, did you shower after the gym?" Or just, I think just being straight with it though, just like you need to shower. You should shower. I think th- I think that'd be a good way is kind of bring up bring it up within a certain context. Yeah, like with like the gym being a good one. Did you go to the gym today? Yes. Did you shower today? Yeah. No. Okay. Well, I'm sorry, but you need to shower, right? Yeah. You know, rather than just be like, "Dude, you stink." <laughs> I actually like. I've actually had to ask this question, like, "Have you showered today?" Because uh, with with some of the youth that I work with, like, they don't like to shower. They won't shower, and they no, smell they, quite bad. They don't bad. have that. Yeah, they don't have that. Uh, they don't care enough. No. I, I, I noticed been... that with my little brother too. I'm, you know, he, yeah, just as a teenager, they just don't care as much. No, I think there was a couple of times where this one youth, it was like a week or so he hadn't showered and like doesn't care to change his clothes either. And you're like, man, this is, this is bad. You smell really bad. And basically you're just like, you need to shower and just basically tell him like, we can't, we're not doing anything until you shower. So it's easier when you're kind of like in control of the situation where like they kind of have to listen to you anyways. But if it's somebody else that's like, that's just a friend or something where you're not like in control of that situation, you're just part of it. It's hard. Do the kid- I think it would be really hard. Do the kids ever fight back? Sometimes they just say, no, I'm not going to. And then you're like, cool. Then you're going to stay here. You can't do anything. <laughs> so Right. Because I feel youth are very likely to oppose their parents because no kid wants to listen to their parents yeah no kid wants to take that advice but i was wondering if the if the children if they listen to you or if they oppose your authority (laughs) or is Um, does it differ like is it based is it different from kid to kid it's kind of different from kid to kid and depending on like the day and their mood kind of thing but most of the time they kind of understand like showering's a part of life you got to shower you got to do it got to get it done so when you tell them like hey you need to shower they kind of understand like okay it's been a few days i probably should it's like thanks for the reminder but there are times where they just lie to you straight to your face like oh i did and you're like you're still wearing the same clothes and they're like oh yeah i just put them back on and you're like okay change your clothes then so you know they didn't, but they changed their clothes. And you're like, well, I can't, I can't be like, oh, show me that you showered. Like, what are they gonna do? Yeah, you're gonna get in trouble for that one. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a that could turn so, into a sticky situation. I think the best way to have that awkward conversation with someone is to bring it up within a context. Find yeah, a way so. to get there and don't be so direct about it. I think certain topics. Within Akotaku, 
the the answer is going to be like you're going to have to be direct about it oh definitely. and not beat around it but not this one this one you want to find a reason to bring it up because if you just tell someone stink they stink you're probably going to hurt their feelings what if it's their breath that smells like they've just be eating a bunch of onions well i tell what? them to brush their teeth that's fair okay you, would you be direct about that or would you be like you you like what did you eat today i think so like, i think so yeah, yeah. I, or like just hand them a pack of gum or yeah that'd be a good one because then you're just giving them uh an immediate you know change or mm-hmm. you're giving them a way of fixing the problem immediately rather than especially if you're out like if you're out and about you're having a time on the city and then somehow you catch a whiff of their breath you're yeah. gonna be like oh go brush Whoa. your teeth man yeah and you know, well, my toothbrush is a half an hour down the road or whatever. Yeah, like, uh, I didn't bring one with me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're, we're at the bar, man. But I probably wouldn't be telling someone to brush their teeth if we were at a bar. No. Be like, here, take this shot. It tastes like cinnamon. Hopefully that's better for your face. But yeah, my the girlfriend told me the other day. She was like, you need to brush your teeth. I agreed with her. I yeah. said to her, I was, okay, I'll go brush my teeth. Because I think it was early in the morning and I hadn't yeah. yet. Yeah, I've definitely had moments like that. My girlfriend's like, oh, my God, your breath smells awful. For like, just waking up. And I'm like, yeah, just woke up. Yeah, I'll go get my toothbrush right now. Brush my teeth. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah. it happens once in a while. Yeah, it's fine. That is Ako Taco. Ako Taco. Ako Taco. It looks really funny, like, just the the way it's written. Ako Taco. I like it, though. That's the whole point. It's awkward. It's awkward. <laughs> the spelling awkward. is awkward. It is. <laughs> All right. It is time for our listener challenge for the week. A listener Jimmy, challenge. Please tell everybody what the listener challenge of the week is. Well, everybody, all you fabulous rollers out there, our challenge for you this week is to tell us something about your favorite season and why it's your favorite season, or something like that, in 40 characters or less on Twitter. Send us your magical Twitter knowledge about why seasons are amazing to you. Or send us a rhyme or saying about a season or some or type of weather. I'm asking for that one for my own purposes because I'm trying to work on a project that kind of incorporates a bunch of different... Uh, rhymes and sayings about seasons and the weather just for fun you can you can find us on twitter at roots of life pod or you can find jimmy on twitter at coach james fitz Mm -hmm. shout shout out all those seasonal things to us yeah because it's beautiful out there i don't know where what it's like for everybody else but i mean in the lower mainland in vancouver island on the west coast of british columbia canada it's fucking green. It's wet. It's beautiful. I love it. That was my favorite part of coming back to the island, which is it's like green. actually seeing something green for a, for a change. The color green, man. Instead of brown and white. It's so underrated. It really I is. I don't think pe- it, you don't appreciate it until you get until you come back to it and there's an yeah. abundance of it. Like, you know, oh you, god. Cuz we grew up with it and then yeah. we leave and then you come back and you're like, holy shit. Like, I don't, I didn't realize how amazing this is. Yeah. Coming back I think here, it's one seeing of the, green grass, though. Oh, so I, good. I think it's one of the reasons that people love BC or people love Vancouver is because they come here and it's such a beautiful city because of the color green. Yeah. That was one of my favorite parts about living in Victoria for a while. The, uh, the whole city from up high, if you go up hiking or something, you look across and part of their... They're like legislatures. You have to keep certain trees when you're building. So the whole city kind of looks like a forest still and with like little scattered houses in between. But when you're driving through the streets, it's a packed city. They just have tons of trees still. It's really cool. Yeah, totally. So beautiful. I love Victoria. It's a beautiful city. It really is. Yeah. So thank you, everybody, for joining us on episode 20 of the roots of life podcast the we April are 20th episode we are so grateful to have gotten to this point we thank you all for joining us this far and we hope that you stay for the journey that we are going to go on 
not just with me and Jimmy, but all of us together. So thank you, everybody. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, anything Roots of Life. You can find at rootsoflifepodcast.com. Yeah. Thank you, everybody, for being here. We appreciate it. It's going to be fun. We're going to keep going, making fun content for you. And hopefully, you enjoy it. Stay weird. <laughs>